हेलो एवरीवन टुडे वी विल डिस्कस सिक्योरिटी फ्रॉम विजन आई एस अगस्त टू एंड द फर्स्ट इशू इज मोस्ट ऑर्गेनाइजेशन इन टाउन्स एंड सिटीज सो वाई वॉज दिस इन न्यूज बिकॉज ऑफ रिसेंट अरेस्ट ऑफ फाइव पीपल विद एलिजिट मॉस लिंक फॉर देयर रोल इन भीमा कोरेगा इंसिडेंट विच हैज वंस अगेन ब्रॉड द डिबेट ऑन द कंसेप्ट ऑफ अर्बन एक्सलिज्म सो देर इज अ लिटल बैकग्राउंड गिवन so let me sum it up in brief that uh, naxalism is the biggest internal security threat to india and it is said by our ex prime minister dr manmohan singh naxalism affects approximately of 40% of india's territory and 35% of its population and naxalism is very much particular in the poverty struck area because of deprivation alienation and uh, lack of justice so who are these uh, naxalites so these naxalites have a belief or a theory in the classless society so they do not believe in upper or lower class they want classless society they want equal distribution of everything economic resources political everything so they they want equal distribution of the opportunities land and everything economic resources but they have disagreement in their political strategy since you know in kerala there is cpi so that cpi believes in electoral democracy there are two other cpis also cpi marxist in the in the year 1964 it was formed it broke away from the cpi like original cpi which was formed in 1950 so the first that came into picture was in the year 1950 cpi and in 1964 cpi marxist broke away from cpi and was led by charu majumdar and they believed in armed struggle to redistribute land to landless so you must be knowing about the naxalbari area in the darjeeling district of west bengal where the tribal youth bimal kisan was lynched by local goons or landlords of that time and because of this the tribals revolted and it became a huge uprising at that time because of unemployment harvest failure and unequal impact of green revolution so what they did was that they converted these remote areas into guerrilla warfare and they used to attack they 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 were violent they were quite radical and this happened during the period of 1964 to 1967 and beyond so they uh, these cpi marxist was active in the west bengal and undivided bihar and odisha area uh, regions area and there is you know that maoism also crept and uh, has has its root in andhra pradesh also so there was a peasant revolution in the shrikakulam which is in uh, currently in telangana by c pulla reddy and in the year 1980 there were about 30 naxalite group which were having 30000 members so uh, in the uh, states of West Bengal undivided Bihar Odisha Andhra Pradesh so by 1980 there were 30 naxalites group of 30000 members and in the year 1980 CPI Marxist Leninist People's War was founded so you do not have to confuse it with CPI Marxist so CPI Marxist was formed uh, under the leadership of Charu Majumdar in the year 1964 and in the year 1980 CPI Marxist Leninist People's War was founded by Konda Palli Sitaramaiah so you need to really remember all these names and the years in Andhra Pradesh and here it is given uh, in the in the material itself it is given that in 1967 this naxalite movement that i have talked about uh, the naxalbari area so uh, and in 1964 CPI Marxist broke away from Uh, CPI and uh, it was led by Charu Majumdar, Kannu Sanyal, and Jangal Santhal in Naxalbari areas, and the movement started. Though the this group, this party was formed in 1964, but it it was in the year 1967 when this Naxalbari incident took place. So this Naxalite movement spread its wind, and in 2004 CPI Maoist was formed, 
एंड हु कम्प्राइज ऑफ सी पी आई माओस तो इट वॉज अ मर्जर ऑफ सी पी आई मार्क्सिस लेरिनस पीपल वॉर ग्रुप दैट आई टोल्ड यू इन द ईयर नाइनटीन एटी इट वॉज फॉर्म इन आंध्र प्रदेश बाय कोंडापल्ली सीतारामैया दिस ग्रुप दिस ग्रुप सी पी आई मार्क्सिस लेरिनस पीपल वॉर ग्रुप कंबाइंड विद माओस कम्युनिस्ट सेंटर ऑफ इंडिया एंड फॉर्म सी पी आई माओस्ट एंड इट प्रोफेस अ वायलेंट आइडियोलॉजिकल line to overthrow the democratically elected parliamentary form of government in india through a three pronged strategy so you need to understand that cpi originally which was formed uh, like in 1950 51 uh, believed in electoral democracy a rather radical one in 1964 cpi marxist this was a rather radical one and it believed in armed struggle and later on this party also Uh, like uh, have uh, have been absorbed in the electoral democracy later on but this cpi maoist which was formed in 2004 uh, on the merger of cpi marxist leninist people war group that was formed in andhra pradesh in the year 1980 and the maoist communist center of india so these people and uh, these these cpi maoist was formed in 2004 which again broke away from the cpi marxist you can say so they have a three pronged strategy that was using its people liberation guerrilla army so maoists used to capture territory in the country, uh, countryside and gradually encircle the urban centers so their target was to uh, to encircle urban centers and and uh, to capture territories like parliamentary uh, parliamentary territories also so use of organizations also known as front organization mainly in urban areas to mobilize certain targeted sections of the urban pop, uh, population recruit professional rev- revolutionaries and raise fund for insurgency and create urban shelters for underground cadres so they used to use this mass uh, mass organization like front organization and they used to mobilize certain people in the urban population and they used to give them training and they used to tell them about their ideologies so these organizations are generally managed by ideologues that include ad, uh, activists mostly operating under the gar- uh, garb of human rights ngo so these uh, activists uh, these activists used to like brainwash people and give them uh, like ideologies uh, in the garb of human rights ngo by showing them that see the government is doing so much bad for Uh, these um, poverty stricken people and these tribal people and uh, so by 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 telling these by telling uh, these urban population or urban people or these things they used to manipulate them and brainwash them and uh, and they used to show that this ideology of classless though this idea of classless society is a very appealing thing but uh, like they their uh, their approach to achieve this class of society which is a rather violent form is a very wrong thing though the idea is good but the approach is not at all good so these organizations used to uh, generally manned by ideologues and they used to garb themselves as human rights ngos and or uh, they were organic organically linked to cpi maoist uh, by the way cpi maoist is a banned organization in india and they used to maintain separate identity in attempt to avoid legal liability such organization are also adept at using legal processes at the indian state to undermine and emasculate enforcement action by the security forces and also attempt to malign the state institution through concerted and systematic propaganda and disinformation campaigns to further their cause so again uh, they these people uh, these academicians and these activists they are also like uh, adept at using these uh, legal processes and they used to undermine the efforts which was done by the state they used to either bomb the bridges or uh, like they used to, uh, or, uh, or kill the crpf jawans so they used to do these things they used to be uh, like uh, they used to brainwash the localites and the uh, tribal youth against using uh, armed forces and and they used to kill security forces people so such uh, they and they even used to give disinformation or wrong information about the government efforts and government campaigns 
and this movement became quite dangerous operational structure of cpi moist the politburo which is the think tank of moist organization keeps in touch with the overground uh, frontal organization these frontal organization which are working in the urban areas which mobilizes the urban population by uh, giving them lucrative ideas of the classless society uh, they, uh, they take hold of those urban poors uh, by by telling them see government is doing so much bad things government is not giving you uh, opportunities and giving them disinformation or wrong information to just persuade them to join uh, these uh, groups to form a rainbow coalition of various insurgent groups so, so they used to club or combine this like in the year 2004 they combined uh, like this cpi marxist leninist people war group combined with the maoist community center of india so they they want to come uh, amalgamate or consolidate themselves with the other insurgent groups so as to launch a unified front attack against the existing state machinery that what i have already told you that this is a banned organization under unlawful activities prevention act 1967 cpi moist party and all its formation and front organization has been listed at uh, terrorist organization under the lawful activities prevention act 1967 about urban nationalism in the year 2004 cpi moist documented title urban perspective our work in urban areas elaborated in on uh, urban nationalism uh, strategy with a focus to gain leadership among urban areas because they were quite particular in the Uh, these poverty struck and remote areas and uh, tribal areas so they want to now spread it, their wings into the urban areas also and they emphasized in mobilizing industrial worker and urban poor that i've already told you that by uh, mobilizing them and showing them see because of class society you are in the lower strata and these urban strata people uh, they are taking away your rights and they they are alienating you and depriving you so such kind of Uh, things are being told to these urban poors and industrial workers and they want to establish front organization and they want to like have an organization of like minded students middle class employees intellectuals women dalits religious minority so whoever are the oppressed uh, members of the society whether dalit women middle class students or industrial whoever are the oppressed ones or who who uh, like such people Uh, they their target are such people and they want to mobilize such people and they give them uh, training also they by and they give them technology material infrastructure along with infiltration of police so they know how to like if if they are getting uh, arms and ammunition of uh, police uh, uh, many many arms and ammunition uh, ammunition of police are found uh, when there are raids conducted in the houses and or uh, like in organizations of police so lot of arms and ammunition are found of police and army because they can get hold uh, or they can get into the police um, forces and can uh, like uh, they they steal away from there active front organization in many indian cities so it is urban nationalism is active in delhi mumbai kolkata chandigarh rachi Hyderabad, Vishakhapatnam, Madurai, Tiruvananthapuram, Nagpur, and Pune. And Pune is the place where this Bhima Kore incident took place. So these are the urban nationalist, nationalist, uh, nationalist uh, affected cities. Uh, and you know about the uh, like the the areas the where the nationalism is very prevalent in the states of West Bengal, Bihar, Chhattisgarh, Odisha parts of Odisha, then uh, parts of Bihar also, then. Uh, a single district of up also madhya pradesh parts of uh, like a few districts of uh, this mumbai like sorry maharashtra a uh, few districts of maharashtra and uh, telangana a few districts of andhra pradesh also is involved a few districts of um, kerala are is also are also involved so they have a hold in a lot of this nationalism has a hold in a lot of uh, poverty struck areas in these states and urban nationalism is active in these given number of cities so what so 
arrest of a person professing the ideology of Maoist. So Kerala High Court in 2015 said that it is not to it is not wrong to have a political ideology. Like actually the Maoist what uh, their ideology in the initial phase was like they wanted to have a classless society. So if you want to have any ideology, it is okay. Like they do not uh, they the the state do not have any problem against uh, your ideology, but uh, using it as a crime or using it as a means to overthrow the present government which is set by the people itself you cannot overthrow them uh, by just 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 because you think of us uh, you you have an ideology and because of that you you cannot become violent or can have an armed struggle so this was what was said by kerala high court that it is not wrong to have a political ideology this is no crime uh, but if uh, only if the individual or organization abhors or resolve to uh, physical violence, the law agency can then take action against the individual or organization. So these people like uh, uh, who were arrested uh, because of uh, on grounds of Bhima Korega incident. So police arrested them because the law agency thinks that uh, uh, they, 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 these people resorted to physical violence or they were inciting uh, people against government so that they can took arm struggle so this was the reason given by police so the significance of urban pres uh, presence support nax uh, so logistic support so they get their logistic support the presence that what i have already told you that uh, when there was a raid that took place in these centers or organization the police seized empty rocket shells rocket launchers in 2006 tapping industrial workers so they know that they have they can tap into the working class and um, and uh, which, which uh, these working class which are working in the important industries like communication oil and natural gas coal transport so if you can think about that if these working class people are like manipulated or brainwashed to do something harmful or uh, like or create violence in these important industries such as oil and natural gas coal transport power defense communication so it can lead to such like huge problem so this you can gauge by understanding that their ideology and their tapping of uh, the people they know whom to target attracting students and youth and urbanization itself has some faulty lines and the most could well exploit these to their advantages rest and rec uh, recuperation on many occasions top level leaders of cpi most have been arrested from cities under the garb of civil society so they they do not tell themselves that we are cpi most or people from such days they they they, pro they project themselves as uh, like NGOs and they are a part of civil society so they project themselves as such because they do they because people also know that CPI most is a banned organization and nobody wants to get associated with such banned organization so 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 they have taken some different route uh, like by projecting themselves as helper or like uh, in uh, like like people from NGO or civil society. So what is the way forward? So Ministry of Home Affairs have suggested that the strategy to tackle left-wing extremism challenge must be include plans to tackle urban nationalism. State must uh, initiate legal action against moist front organization and a separate budget should be provided to counter growing national footprints in cities. Initiating legal proceedings against the ideologues, including academicians and activists, often result in negative publicity for enforcement agency.